with Dolores Cannon or study a lot of her work, she said, mm. well, her subconscious is actually the way she defines it incorporates the higher self from source or divine or God or whatever. So what's your definition when you talk about the subconscious? So I do see it a little bit differently because for me, I see it as we're mind, body, and soul. So I'll see the soul as my spiritual self. My soul is that part of me that connects to my higher power. I see my body and then I have my mind, right? Um, my mind, which is my brain in action. Right. So for me and how I'm trained and how I work is that we have there's two parts to your mind, the conscious and the subconscious. Right now, you and I are using our conscious mind. The conscious part of our mind is the part of us that knows the difference between what's wrong and what's right, what's real and imagined, what we want in the future, what we want for ourselves, what we don't want. The subconscious part of our mind is like a big computer. It's like a big computer that holds on to everything that we've ever learned and everything that we've ever experienced, everything we've smelt, everything we've felt, like everything, all of our experiences, all of the feelings that we had when we had those experiences. And the subconscious mind, it learns two different ways, through an emotional experience and through repetition. So we all know, like we learned in school about doing, you know, the alphabet, tying our shoes, driving. We all learned by doing things over and over again. We did it so many times. And that once we did it so many times, the subconscious mind went, goes, oh, okay, he's doing this so many times. Let's make this automatic. And it becomes automatic. You don't have to think about how to tie your shoes. You don't have to think about how to put the food into your mouth. You learned that through repetition. But the other way that we have something that's held in the subconscious mind is through an emotional experience. If the experience is emotional enough that your mind believes it needs to hold on to it. So if somebody's, you know, going to school and they get bullied, you know, they go to school, they're filled with confidence. They believe that the world is all theirs. Everybody loves them. They're absolutely amazing because everybody at home keeps telling them how amazing they are. But then they go to school and somebody bullies them. That feeling that they're going to have is going to be so strong and it's going to hurt them and make them feel so uncomfortable that the subconscious mind will hold on to that feeling so that now it's to kind of keep you safe, right? It holds on to that feeling because it made you feel so unwell that it holds on to it so that whenever you're in a similar situation, it sets off this feeling, these emotions that it's holding on to so that you don't put yourself in that situation again. You know, we have all of these different situations and things that happen that cause us to feel all of these emotions, right? That aren't necessarily physical, but the subconscious mind still holds on to those emotions, whether it's physical or it's emotional, right? So this is how we're working with hypnotherapy. And this is how we're working with the mind. As I did the hypnotherapy and I did the healing because we can heal through hypnotherapy, the subconscious mind responds to what we imagine. The subconscious part of our mind does not know the difference between what's real and imagined. That's the job of the conscious mind. 